How's everybody doing? You guys having a good time? Yeah, good retreat. Relaxing, refreshing. That's great. Wonderful. I, I want to offer, like I said in the beginning, I don't know if I clearly mentioned that, but I want to offer the Mass for for your parents today. You know, I, I just, there's always something in my heart that I think it's very special when parents um, obviously raise their children in the faith, but uh, allow them to come to things like this and support you guys in coming to retreats like this, you know? So let's, I want to specifically offer my intention for the Mass on the altar today for for your parents, you know? So pray for them as well. And because uh, one day you guys are God willing going to be possibly uh, parents too, that you guys will have to obviously, of course, lead your children in the faith as well. Beautiful, beautiful blessing. So pray for your parents today and also uh, any other intentions maybe you have on your heart. And that really, I, that came to me because of our gospel today. If we just remember what we just heard here, Jesus said, let the children come to me, do not prevent them. Let the children come to me, do not prevent them. My short little reflection, it's not long. I've got one little post-it note here with a couple little things on it. Let the children come to me, do not prevent them. We all know that there's so many different things in the world that try to prevent us from coming to Jesus, right? We all know, we all probably can think of something in our lives that prevents us from coming to Jesus. I thought of three things. The first one is noise. And I was so happy to hear that when I came here today that I guess your phones have been willfully, I don't know if they were taken or if you guys willfully gave them up, but whatever the case is, you were taken away from maybe that distraction, that noise that can oftentimes keep us from Jesus, right? There's so many other things, so, many, so much other noise in our lives that can keep us from our Lord. What, think of numerous examples, the TV, the internet, obviously our phone, billboards, whatever you want to name. There's so many different things that are noisy and just cluttering our minds and our hearts that keep us away from Jesus. So that's the first thing that prevents us from God. I just, I just actually heard this morning when I was at That Man Is You, you guys ever heard of that program? Or some of your dads might go to that program? That the average person spends four and a half minutes every day just in prayer. Like the average American, only four and a half minutes in prayer a day. And that's really, that's really little. That's really little. And the whole reason that they were saying that is because so much of our time is consumed with other noise that the world puts in our midst, right? That we only have a couple minutes for God each day. So that's the first thing, noise. The second thing, my opinion, but I think it's very true. It's happened in my own life too. Fears, doubts, and probably proof of really God existing. That keeps us from Jesus. There's so many things like that that we have fear that, oh, God's just not around. He's not in my life. All these different things are happening. I really can't, I don't believe that he exists. I don't think that he's really there for me. They keep us away from Jesus. And then the third one, I don't know if Father Romke reflected on this at all yesterday, but uh, that first reading we had yesterday was about friends. Do you guys remember that last night? About friends, and Sirach was talking about what a good friend is and what a bad friend is. That's the third thing that I think keeps us from Jesus, is good uh, or bad friends. Bad friends can keep us from Jesus. You know, we could be a bad friend, hopefully not, but there's other people in our lives that maybe can turn us away from uh, Jesus Christ, you know? They can prevent us from coming to him. So those are the three things that I thought that really prevent us sometimes from coming to Jesus. Noise, fears, doubts, and then false friendships. Now, we know we're all on a journey to God. Jesus said, let the children come to me. We're all children of God. So he's calling us all to his side. So what are the things that we might think guide us to Jesus, bring us closer to Jesus. We got these things that prevent us. What are the things that bring us closer to Jesus, help us get there? Last week, I took a trip. I went up to the UP. Does anybody like skiing? Dominic, just one? Okay, a couple. I went downhill skiing last weekend in the UP, and it was, uh, it was a great experience. And I, it was freaky one time. I actually went down a 
one of my friends met me up there and he took me down a slope that was a double black diamond. You guys know what black diamonds were? And I was pretty freaked out. I'm like, I can't do this. He said, just make the sign of the cross, Father. You'll be just fine. So <laughs> I did and I, uh, it was a slalom course. I was freaked out, but I, I, I got down and I did fall. But, uh, but anyway, on this trip, on the way up there, I thought I was thinking of three things. As I made this journey up north, I thought I was making my journey up to this trip that I was gonna do this wonderful ski weekend, have a good time with my friends. And I thought of three things that, uh, in an analogous sense, that help lead us towards our goal. What's our goal? To get to Jesus, right? Like the reading says, let the children come to me. To get to God, that's our goal. All of us, to return to him. So when I was traveling up there, I thought of three things that really helped me to put a focus on how we're, how we're traveling and journeying on our life closer to God. Number one, what do we have to do? So a guide that can help us get close to Jesus is what? Follow the directions on a journey, right? I had to follow my directions to get up to the UP. If I didn't follow them, I wasn't going to make it there. I, I wasn't going to find the place. I had to punch it in my GPS. I had to follow the directions. So too in our spiritual life, what do we have to do? Follow the directions. Follow those directions that Jesus gives us, right? All those beautiful things he lays out for us, all the beautiful things that the church gives us to help us lead us, help lead us to Jesus. So we always got to follow his direction. Sometimes we can go astray, right? The noise takes us off track. We make the wrong turn and we don't follow directions. And that prevents us from getting to Jesus. So we got to follow the directions. Second thing, on my way up to, that, uh, up to the UP, you guys know I live in Huntley, right? So I left Huntley, there was absolutely no snow. Nothing, no snow on the ground. So I was kind of freaked out. I'm going to ski for the weekend and I had no idea if there was gonna be snow or not. So I get an hour north, still no snow. It's about a six hour drive. Second hour in, I see a little, a few snow piles here and there on the side of the road, you know, in shady spots. Okay, okay, there's hope. You know, the four, then about four hours into the trip, I start seeing snow on the grass. Get all the way up there, beautiful snow everywhere. You know, I, I think too in the spiritual life, sometimes we can see that there's no results, you know, so we can get to some point on the, on the journey, right? And say, oh, there's nothing there. God's not there. Like I was saying in that second thing, there's doubts, there's fears that God is not there. I'm not going to be able to reach my goal. There's no proof of God existing, but we have to really trust and continue that journey, get all the way to the end. What? I had beautiful snow, right? I had a beautiful, beautiful snowy mountain that I could ski on. So too in the spiritual life. There's a great, great goal at the end, to meet Jesus Christ, be with him for all eternity. We just have to persevere. So I think that's the second guideline for us, is to persevere even when we don't see answers right away. Persevere, keep going, keep going, do not fear. And then lastly, what I say, the, 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 the third thing that keeps us from Jesus is false friendship. So the third good thing that helps guide us to, to God is what? What's the opposite? Good friends, right? We need solid, good friends to help us lead us to Christ. We need that. I know in my own teenage years, I had people that I thought were friends. I probably wasn't the best friend myself at times. But sometimes we might think that people might be, yeah, they're, they're a good friend, but they're leading us in a bad direction sometimes. So we really got to trust only in good friends. You know, people that want to go to church, people that want to... You know, they see the beauty of the sacraments. They want to be fed with the Eucharist. We need those beautiful, good friends that help lead us to Christ, not the false friends that keep us away from Jesus, that prevent us, like the gospel says today. So as we heard in the gospel today, let the children come to me. Do not prevent them. My challenge for myself, for each one of you, maybe think of one thing upcoming in Lent, Lent's coming up when? Next week, right? Next Wednesday? Think of one thing that maybe prevents us from getting closer to Christ. One thing. We all have something. We all have one thing or maybe many things. Think of one thing that might prevent us from getting closer to Christ or does prevent us from getting closer to Christ. And instead, choose something in the opposite that helps guide us closer to Christ, you know?
just one thing, easy little challenge, easy little reflection, and uh, take that with you, bring that to our Lord, and hopefully that can really uh, help us get closer to him. That's what he desires for each one of us. So let's continue to pray. We'll pray for our parents, pray for all your parents, pray in thanksgiving for this ability to celebrate the Holy Mass here at, uh, at Bishop Lane, and really ask God to continue to pour his blessings upon each one of us.